Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, Professor of Mathematics at Kasumnis River College in Sacramento, California. This video is a continuation of the unit circle, sine and cosine functions, and really specifically just talking about uh, angles. So this is kind of an introduction to a trig course. So we are now going to talk about ang angle measure, specifically degrees. There's two common ways to measure an angle. Uh, and as you move forward in mathematics, you start letting go of degrees and using something else, which we'll talk about in a different video. But for right now, let's recall what a degree is. A degree is just one 360th of a full circular rotation. An angle measured in degrees must always contain the sign, that little circle, the degree sign must always, if you do not have that degree sign on there, you're talking about a different style of angle and your professor will probably assume that. So just to let you know, um, where did, why did we decide that there were 360 degrees in a full rotation? Like who in the world thought about that? Like it just seems kind of arbitrary that somebody said, you know what? I think what should happen, we should have 360 full degrees to that complete rotation there. That just is an odd idea. And there are many myths and legends about why we have 360 degrees in a full circle. One of them would be, well, it's approximately the number of days it takes to rotate around the sun. Mm, that could be true, and I'm not saying it's not, uh, but I've heard tell that it's more Egyptian than anything else. And what do I mean by more Egyptian than anything else? Well, the Egyptians had what was a base 60 uh, number system. And when you think about the most perfect of triangles, you would think about this very beautiful equilateral triangle. And if you're in a base 60 system, that means that all of your slices to your number system, just like our base 10 system, we slice things into 10 pieces. Our decimal system gets sliced into 10 pieces. In a base 60, all of your slices, you get, all your numbers get sliced into 60 pieces. Well, then you have that 60 piece slice there. Here's another equilateral triangle. There's 60 more slices there. You have another equilateral triangle. There's 60 more slices here. You have another equilateral triangle. There's 60 more slices there, yet another equilateral triangle, which doesn't look so equilateral, whatever, 60 more slices there. And finally, last one, which does not look like equilateral, but it is 60 slices there. Six times 60 slices, and you have 360 slices altogether. Now that's what I've heard. Do I, am I saying that that's 100% true? No, but it's such a cool description because if you think about equilateral triangles and fitting them together like that, you do go through a full rotation from beginning to end of a full circle. So I think that's kind of a neat way to describe it. I'm sure in the comments section, somebody's gonna say, no, um, that's not exactly how it was done. I'm totally fine with that, whatever. But this gives us the Next theorem, there are 360 degrees in a full circular rotation, and that is because 1 360th of a full circular rotation is defined to be one degree. So therefore, 360 of them would be a full rotation. So that's just that. All right, let's sketch a couple angles here. Uh, again, you should already know how to do this. So I'm not going to like be crazy about this. I want a 45 degree angle. 45, well, we know this right here would be a 90 degree angle. So 45 is just half of that. That would be a 45 degree angle right there. And I'll just say it open that way. And I'm gonna label that 45 degrees. Or you could label that alpha equals, well, I'm labeling that point. Maybe I should label this alpha is equal to 45 degrees. There we go. 
So that's a good 45 degree angle. Now, if you didn't know that 45 degree angles, uh, kind of, or a 45 degree angle looks like that, just think about the fact that it's 360 degrees all the way around, right? And then ask yourself, well, if I rotated halfway around, what would that be? Well, it's half of 360, so that would be 180 degrees. If I rotated only half of that, trying to be somewhat clean here, half of 80 would be 180, sorry, would be 90 degrees. And if you rotate half of that, then you have gone through 45 degrees. So there are several different ways you can build it. Those, by the way, 180, 90, and 45 degree angles are very special angles in trigonometry. The second one is to graph the angle or sketch the angle 150 degrees. I'm gonna scoot down for that. And I'm trying not to graph these or sketch these in what is called standard position, even though it's a habit of mine to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do it like this. Suppose that you have an angle coming out or an initial side coming out like that. I don't really care about the second point on that. It's not that big of a deal. And I wanna rotate and open this angle through an angle of 150. If you go that far, you've moved 180. You've gone half a circle, so that's way too far. So we have to back off a little bit. And the, the bit that we back off, if this was 180, maybe I should use a different color here zoom in if this right here was the 180 degree terminal point or terminal side then i don't want to get all the way there i'd like to be just a little bit shy of that and specifically i'd like to be about 30 degrees shy of that so uh, i'll even mark that in there this is 30 degrees so therefore this must be 150 and that is our angle beta there's something very special about that 30 degree angle that's gonna come up later on. I'm just gonna say the two words right now that we're gonna be referencing as we move forward. 30 degrees is called a reference angle. It's just a way that helps us graph angles or sketch angles, but it's also incredibly important for trigonometry. So I'm trying to get you everything I can in, um, in these lectures as we prepare uh, for trigonometry. Now, what's a trig course without an application? It'd be a lame course because trig is perfectly set up for a lot of applications. Uh, it's a great course for that. So let's start with just a simple one. It takes the earth about 24 hours to make a complete revolution on its axis. Through how many degrees does the earth turn in 90 minutes? That's a great question, me. So you can think about it this way. If I had the ability to have the earth rotate for 24 hours, it would rotate all the way through 360 degrees of that. And that would be great, but I don't have 24 hours to go to rotate through. So instead I'm going to rotate only for an hour and a half. And that might only get me that far. I'm not saying it's going to get me that far. I'm just saying it might get me that far. How do you compute that out? Well, it's a very simple process, actually. The main issue with this question is you have to convert everything to the same units. And the units in this problem are really gonna be hours. So I wanna convert these minutes, which I'll actually highlight in a different color. I'll, be, I'll use this guy right here. I'm gonna convert those minutes to hours. 90 minutes is 1.5 hours. Okay, so we went through 1.5 out of 24 full hours, right? That's really what, what we did. So you want to know what fraction of a day did we rotate through? And while writing that, I kept having to turn off the protractor. So I just decided to turn it off. All right. So what fraction of the day did we rotate through? Well, you only went through 1.5 hours out of the 24. So 1.5 out of 24 hours, right? And uh, that is the fraction of the full rotation we've gone through. So 1.524 ths of 360 degree full rotation. That's, that's how you compute that out. How many degrees do we rotate through in that time? Well, that fraction of 360 degrees. Let's go ahead and figure out what that is. So I just went ahead and rewrote 1.5 as three halves. And the word of means multiplication, right? Very important to note. 
that degree sign is still going to sit there throughout this entire process. Now we know from our arithmetic, this will be 3 over 2 times 24. Again, times 360. And always remember, that degree sign is there. Great. Well, let's see. 2 can go into 360 uh, 180 times. I'll at least do that. Whoops. I don't want to use that ink though. So that's 3 out of 24. We know 3 24 is 1 8 uh, times 180. Again, degrees. Let me just make sure that's in there. And then I'll reduce this fraction. That becomes, whoops, darn it. Keep using that. 45 halves. And that's in degrees. And if you really want to write, that's 22.5 degrees. And that might make sense to you, right? An hour and a half of the day, you're you're almost, uh, you know, one twelfth of the way through the day. So, um, you know, that that seems about about right. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now let's get to what I've been wanting to get through, which is get to which is putting our angles in standard position. Uh, because it's such a habit for me to do that and most mathematicians and most students are that way They like to put their angles in standard position and that's what we want So an angle is in standard position if its vertex is located at the origin and its initial side extends along the positive X axis Let's sketch the same two angles that we had earlier But in standard position this time, which is the correct positioning honestly So I'll go ahead and uh, put the terminal or the initial side along the positive x-axis and then I'll open an angle, a positive angle of 45 degrees. So this is alpha equals 45 degrees. And then I'll just draw the terminal side. That looks like a 45 degree angle to me. So that's pretty good. The 150 degree angle, again, you start at what you would consider to be the origin. I don't actually draw axes here, mainly because I just don't. And I point an arrow in the positive x-axis direction. It's a ray, that's really what I'm doing. And I will open a positive angle past 45, past 90, almost all the way to 180 degrees. I'm shy by 30 degrees of 180, but still something like this. And that would be my terminal side right there. And that angle is beta, which we are calling 150 degrees. Notice I'm not being like super exact. I didn't use a protractor or some silliness like that because normally you wouldn't be asked to use a protractor. You wouldn't have access to a protractor for something like this. You should just know 150 is roughly about that angle. Same thing with the 45 degree angle. Now we're getting into like the meaty details, positive and negative angles. So we're starting to really dip our toes into more trig here. If the angles measured in a counterclockwise direction from the initial side to the terminal side is said to be a positive angle. I said that in the last video, but here we are uh, codifying that. If the angle is measured in a clockwise direction, it is called a negative angle. So sketch each of these angles in standard position. The first one is a negative 45 degrees. So I'll start with an initial side. Again, the initial sides always are like the positive X axis. They start at the origin, even though I didn't draw an X, Y axis here, I could if I wanted to. And then you rotate, in this case, it's a negative angle. So I'm rotating this way by 45 degrees. That's alpha equals a negative 45 degrees and I'll draw the terminal side right there not bad then you have beta which is negative 150 degrees let's go ahead and draw that one in uh, let's see origin I don't need to go crazy with my ray there I'll just go that far and then again it's a negative angle I'll use red for that and I'll go backwards 150 degrees so again, this is beta backwards 150 degrees. Backwards again is in the clockwise direction. There we go. Let's look at theta equals 210 degrees. That's kind of a fun angle. I'm gonna go ahead and again, just start the ray emanating in the positive x-axis direction. And it's a positive angle, I'll use green for that. Here's 
90 degrees. Here's 180 degrees, so we're already beyond 180 degrees. How far beyond? An extra 30 degrees. Just a little extra 30 degrees beyond 180 because 210 minus 180 is 30. You do have to get used to that computation because it's super popular in trig. And so this would be the angle 200, theta equals 210 degrees. I want to draw your attention to something before I get to the last example there. This angle, beta equals negative 150. Its terminal side looks almost identical to the terminal side to theta is equal to 210 degrees. And in, in actuality, they are the same terminal side. If I went backwards 150 degrees, it's the same as going forward 210 degrees. And so these, we will define them, but they're called coterminal angles. They share a terminal side. We'll define that officially in a little bit, but that's just for your information. All right, the very last one is there to trick those who already have had trig. This is phi, or phi if you want to call it that, equaling to pi but pi degrees, pi degrees. Well, that's roughly 3.14 degrees. I'm just gonna say roughly 3.14 degrees. You can have pi act as a degree, as long as it has a degree sign on it. So let's go ahead and graph that one. It's a little bit, actually quite a bit harder to graph that just because it's such a small sliver of a degree. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just do this. There we go. Uh, that angle right there that I've just shown is uh, phi, which is equal to pi degrees. And let's go ahead and show the terminal side. And I don't know if I can exactly draw that. Oops, darn it. I was doing such a good job too. So even that's way too wide open, but it's really hard to draw a 3.14 degree angle, but it's a very small angle. The angle I probably drew right there is maybe 10 degrees, honestly. Um, so it's, it's not the best, but it gets the job done when you're drawing by hand. So there you go. Those are all angles drawn in standard position. Pretty neat. Another thing that's critical in trigonometry is to know what a quadrantal angle is. A quadrantal angle is an angle whose terminal side is on an axis. That is, uh, I mean, it happens so often that we do need to know what a quadrantal angle is. And by the way, I, if I ever say it this way, I know I'm wrong, but I often say quadrantial. Um, I don't know why. Maybe because it just, the word looks like a tarantula to me. I don't know why. So name six quadrantal angles. Well, name six of them. Great. That's, that's not terrible. Like theta equals 90 degrees. That angle, if drawn in standard position, would land on an axis. There you go. Uh, by the way, I should say an angle in standard position is really what that should say in standard position. Um, I'll have to modify that on my lecture notes. Anyway, uh, we can think of other ones. So I'll call that theta one, theta two, 180 degrees. Let's get really creative. Theta three, let's go uh, backwards 270 degrees. If you don't know that that lands on a on an axis, backwards 270 degrees goes backwards 90, 180, and an additional 90. Well, 180 plus 90 is negative, well, negative 180 plus negative 90 is negative 270 degrees. Um, an easy one. Theta four, zero degrees. Super easy, right? Uh, theta five, um, let's do something greater than 360 degrees. Let's do 360 plus an additional 90, so 450 degrees. All of these land on quadrant, uh, are on axes, so they're quadrantal angles. Uh, and then finally, now that I'm bored with it, uh, let's say we started, we rotate to 180, and then we add another two rotations of 360 degrees, another two rotations of 360 degrees. Well, that's 720, because that's three, two times 360, uh, plus 100, so that's uh, 720, 820, uh, plus 80 is 900 degrees. 
And that angle, by the way, if you wanted to draw it, would look like the following. You have, again, I, an initial side. It would open to 180 degrees and then continue for one, two full rotations. That angle right there would be theta sub six, which is 900 degrees. And eh, you could draw on the terminal side. <laughs> you don't have to, but you could. So you can see there's a lot of ways to land on the same terminal side. And we'll talk about that. I think I mentioned it earlier, but we will talk about that in a future video. But this is enough for this video for now. So we're pretty much done talking about angle measure in degrees. The next video, we're going to focus on a new angle measure. And this one ends up being the one that dominates all of calculus. So we want to work in this new angle measure as much as possible because calculus does not work very well at all with degrees. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside. It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.